Hello everyone, this is Brad from Sabaretti Woodworks. Uh, this isn't quite exactly how I expect my first video to be, uh, but I feel like this will be helpful to people who might be in the same uh, situation I am. So, long story short, back in May I purchased this CX-08 from Busy Bee Tools. Uh, it was a great, or it, it is a great uh, jointer. Uh, I put maybe 100 to 150 linear feet of wood through it, uh, and then the cutter head just decided to seize up and cease to spin. So I contacted Busy Bee, and it took about, um, by the time I contacted them, contacted them again, and finally got the ball rolling and the part in, it was probably about a month later by the time everything was all said and done. So a little slow on the customer service side getting back to me, but when they did get back to me, everything was good, and Ricardo was excellent at, uh, at uh, helping me out. <clears throat> now, so what happened was my cutter head actually ceased to spin. Uh, you'll have to apologize for the background. Uh, it's a little messy. I've just got a bunch of projects on the go. But anyway, so my cutter head had ceased to spin. I've, I've since fixed it by this point. But what happened was in the uh, bearing block here, the uh, bearing decided it wanted to cease living as a bearing and become uh, a piece of scrap metal. Uh, I accept its choice, but uh, it does not exactly bode well for my projects. So anyway, long story short, Busy V eventually sent me out a new uh, new bearing for your charge because everything was under warranty, and I got it back together. Now, the instruction booklet, as some of you may know, uh, these things are pretty well garbage. They really don't uh, help a lot. Uh, I've got a few Busy V uh, tools. I've got a, uh, I got a uh, bandsaw over here. I've got a table saw over here, and the, the instructions are all kind of the same. Uh, even the uh, same goes for like the, uh, the King, uh, King uh, planers. Instructions are very vague at best, and as long as you have some inclination of how things are supposed together, you'll be okay. If not, it's going to be difficult for you. But this video is going to, in turn, sort of help explain how to re remove the uh, cutter head and put things back together in hopefully a sensible way that makes a little more sense than what is in the booklet. So first off, uh, in order to get everything undone, I came over here, I loosened off the bolts on my motor, lifted it up, and I removed the uh, pulley system from the cutter head itself. Uh, in the manual, it says you have to disassemble your entire fence, uh, remove it and everything else like that. That's not the case at all. Uh, if you slide it all the way back and bring the, the fence parallel up to, uh, uh, parallel to the, uh, the actual bed, you'll have plenty of room to get things out. As long as you've disconnected your pulley, she'll come straight out. Uh, what I did have to disassemble though, was just the, uh, the cutter guard, and the little uh, fence that just sat out, out here. The name escapes me at the moment. Uh, but then at that point, I had full access to my cutter head itself. At that point, I had to give it a bit more space. So I lowered the in-feed bed all the way down. Uh, the out-feed bed, you also had to lower down, but there was no real good description on how to do that. And so I was racking my brain trying to figure out that, oh yeah, well, if I just loosen off this, then I should be able to drop it. Well, not really. Um, it took me a bit of trial and error, but then you have these, uh, these depth stopper bolts here. So all I did, I left the, the inside depth, uh, set to where it is. The one on the outside, I just had to loosen off this nut here and then I backed this guy all the way off and then I was able to completely lower the bed down to uh, gain access to the, uh, the actual cutter head itself. Uh, the cutter head, pretty simple when you take it out. Uh, it's held on by uh, four, four long bolts right here. Just Allen key, you can just untie, unscrew them. They come out, they got little washers, so just be careful not to lose those. Uh, but one thing to be very, very cautious of when you're lifting the cutter head out of the, uh, the jointer itself is that you have, or you could have, these tiny little shims. So there's like four or five in this little pile here. Uh, these ones were on the outside of my, uh, of my jointer, uh, just underneath the cutter head. So as I lifted them up, I pulled them out and I set them off to the side. You don't want to lose those. And keep in mind how many you have where, because uh, not all jointers might be manufactured the same. There will be very minute differences. So that's why they got these shims to make sure everything was level. When I got this uh, back in May, everything was level right out of the box. I had zero, zero fiddling to do with it. It was great, and off I went. Uh, so just whenever you take that apart, be careful not to lose the shims because they could fall down. Then you got to figure out what went where. So careful on that. Anyway, uh, over to the cutter head. So according to the email that I got, uh, you just had to take the bearing block off uh, on uh, uh, inspect sort of what was what was damaged. 
because uh, they sent me a few things that could be wrong, like a, a knife could have come loose and got stuck or whatnot. Uh, that wasn't the case. Uh, for me, I knew it was the bearing because it was turning and then ceased to turn, and I can still wiggle a little bit, but there, then there was stops. Um, so in order to get this guy off, this guy's on there pretty good. I had to use a bit of a pry bar, so I put the, the bottom part, because once this is out, these bearing blocks can spin freely on either side. Uh, this guy was able to spin completely around. This guy had maybe a quarter of an inch of movement, if that. Um, so I just stood it up inside this little vise, and then I used a, uh, a pry bar very carefully, just right in here, to pry the bearing block off. At that point, uh, the bearing was then sitting on top. This, is, this was the outside, so I couldn't see what was inside at the time. All I could see was this, because this was pressed up against the side there. Uh, anyway, uh, and then they just said, yeah, that just comes off. It does not. Uh, it does not just come off. Uh, it's on there very well, uh, which is good, but then when you got to take it off, it's a bit of a pain. So if you have a friend that has a bearing puller, uh, find that friend and use that, because there is no way you're going to get this off without damaging anything here. Uh, if you're just going to be like a barbarian and use hammers and screwdrivers and pry bars to get it off, you're going to end up damaging the entire cutter head, and then you'll just be back to square one. Um, but yeah, so, so that was that. I did, I took off the, the actual pulley, uh, the actual pulley, uh, the assembly, uh, on the actual cutter head, uh, just so I can get a bit of a better view into the bearing block or into the bearing and the bearing block on the uh, pulley side. Um, and that was fine, uh, for my visual inspection. It was just this side, obviously that was seized and that was the problem there. Um, anyway, so I'm going to be putting this back together in the near future, just in complete reverse order. So I hope that overall was helpful to somebody, uh, whether or not you have uh, one of the Craftex CX-08s uh, or any sort of derivative thereof, because I know a lot of jointers are pretty well identical, just different brand name. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, hopefully that uh, helps you guys out. And uh, best of luck in all your projects. See you later.